Cole Becker. I play guitar and sing in scores. Um, it's going really well. It's been like the drives have been really long, which is fine because we actually lucked out. We played at this festival in Texas on Friday, but the fights were supposed to play yesterday in Austin, and they had to drive all the way from Austin to here last night. Um, we used to be in a band called Eminem's Army, and we, we came out with an EP called Swim. And we, we really didn't really didn't want to do Emily's Army anymore. And so we kind of like quit that and started a band. But we like the first thing that came to mind was oh let's we came out with an EP called Swim, let's be swimmers and have it be like an extension of what it used to be. Honestly, like Atlanta is one of my favorite places to play and that's not pandering. That's just, it's, it's a really nice place to be. Um, the biggest thing that feels different to me is that like things get done a lot faster. You know, before it was just all of us and so if we wanted to make a poster, we had to like, you know, cut up a bunch of things from magazines and like paste them onto a piece of paper and then like draw stuff. And now, like, we can tell them, hey, we want this, like, collage like, DIY aesthetic, but, like, on the low, be, like, a corporate band, so, like, do that for us. And they, they really understand, their art department's really good. Um, we're gonna finish up this tour and then kind of celebrate the holidays, um, go home, and, um, after that, in 2017, we're gonna do a lot more stuff, but music kind of dies down after December, like early December. So. I think it's just like uh, the main thing that it does with our music is we just try really hard to make sure that our music is accessible for everyone and that it, that it doesn't target any, like, any specific demographic negatively or positively. We're just trying to make music that, that, um, that it, like, I don't know, it, that's built for the 21st century in terms of who, who the intended audience is and like, we try to think about just like the gravity of words, you know, because there are some there are some songs that like if you take they're classic songs, but if you take a look back at them, it's like oh my god, dude, like that's yeah. So like there are a lot of things that have that contain really politicized and like fucked up things within them, even if they seem like simple songs. And so we try to write simple songs that don't contain anything fucked up in them. No, I think that, that's like my favorite. That's like my the first band I was ever obsessed with is The Clash, and, and Joe Strummer was like the political dude. You know, he he lived in a squad. He was like a socialist anarchist through and through. Um, but now, like my like contemporary people, I really look up to are like I think um, people like Solange and um, people like like Kathleen Hanna, who really just and like like across all genres. Like now that we have the internet, you can listen to any sort of music, and and you you're exposed to a lot more different things. So when I was younger, it was just like punk music was like all the political stuff. But now it's like, I, like there are so many people doing such amazing, like beautiful things. Like, um, I don't know, I really liked, uh, yeah, I like everything Kathleen Hanna does with the Julie Bruins. And, and then people who, like, who are also cis hat white guys that, that try really hard to, to like open up a space for other people, you know? Uh, I look up to them too, like 
Brad Pitt his production company like like as much as he's like a fucking buff dude like buff bro he actually does a lot of really cool things that I would like to kind of do similar things along those lines um, in the future. Pretending some look out the window when the moon is getting high and some look out the walls. I think that was the first sort of thing that I really um, gravitated towards was because I was really good friends with all the girls that started the feminism club at my high school. So I would always go to the meetings and that was like the first thing I ever really felt like passionately about. This is something that it's like like as an ally, like this is something that I have a platform to talk about and that I should talk about because silence is violence. I think I'd like to see the the kind of like there's a there's a really beautiful thing about the carelessness of rock that is only accessible for some people, you know? And I'd really like to see it, like, be something that everyone can access, that, you know, like, like, it's awesome to see, like, 14-year-old boys be like, yes, like, this is saving my life, like, I feel like, like, my life is so boring, and this, like, me stage diving right now is, like, the only thing that's saving me from going crazy. And that's awesome, but it, it I really want to see that happen at the same level with young girls and I think that's something that I'm really happy with like that I've been seeing a lot more of lately where the our crowds have been have been safe enough spaces for people to be able to let go in that sort of way and I like that a lot I think that's really cool and I think that's the future Turn the music up louder, girl. I know we only got an hour girl before I leave you for a long um, yeah, it does, I mean, I think it makes it, I definitely talk louder to the audience, like, I start to yell, and it's cool, it's, it's just a different thing, like, I like, I like being able to engage a whole room, and that's something that doesn't really feel as readily available with a big crowd, but when you can make that happen, and when you can get a whole crowd to agree to a specific set of rules or to be um, or to move left or right you know I think that's something that's really special and it's something that that is really beautiful because you see like with these crowds it's like a thousand two thousand people all like in the same movement working toward the same kind of goal so I, it was one of those things where I, I knew uh, that it happened. I found out about Girls Against at the same time as people started feeling comfortable like coming out on Twitter saying, hey, like, I love your guys' music, but the, this is a real problem, not just at your shows, but like at everyone's shows. Um, and so I thought it was, it, it's something that, that I think the credit often goes to the wrong people in stopping that sort of thing. Like, like we we have this tendency to to put to put people in bands on pedestals for for being able to stop that sort of thing when it happens. But that's one in every a hundred sexual assaults that happen at concerts that's able to be stopped by that. And so what I really like about Girls Against is that it's a conversation among music fans and people at concerts who are trying to create a community that goes beyond just what an artist can do and it's a safe support network. I think our main role is just to listen and offer support um, because at the end of the day, like we are, we're all like average sized cisgender men, you know? And so we are not really thrown to this issue as much as other people and um, like, it goes beyond us being able to call something out at a concert because a lot of times we're not going to be able to see it. I think the main thing is that is is we need to 
Like our role is definitely to to help foster the conversation and uplift the people who are reaching out to Girls Against and people that are working for Girls Against. Um, and just like fostering a conversation about what how male privilege manifests itself at concerts and how sexual assault happens a lot at concerts more than more than most people are really aware of. Um, and I think it's a it's a conversation that needs to be had and a conversation that like that's our main role is just to allow space for the conversation to happen and uplift the conversation where it does happen. Um, I saw a really interesting model for this. Um, this band, Modern Baseball, has been has has a thing called a safe space hotline. But I think they give um, they give like cell phones all of the same. They give like a, one cell phone to the head of security at a venue, and they pass out cards that have the cell phone number on it. And so anyone at the concert can call the head of security when someone's making. Comfortable at the show, and when the safe space is reached, and that that sort of agreement, that like silent agreement between concert goers is reached, I think that's really cool. I think just the idea that that like um, the, the main thing is offering a platform for people who are victims of this to feel comfortable reaching out, um, and hopefully like naming the people that are that are. Um, like perpetrating this, I think, like just offering a space where people feel comfortable talking, like speaking out against it, is really important. Hey, Mark. Um, there's no excuse for that to happen, and and. Don't have to tell yourself that, that is okay or that's normal behavior at a concert. You can let it like, like, like you should just feel how you feel about it. You know, you're, you're you, you are a victim of something awful and really uncomfortable. And uh, I'm really sorry. And I hope that I hope that we can work something out to where dudes stop being really fucking creepy at shows. <laughs> Fuck off! Like, seriously, like, I don't know where along the line, like, it became okay for, for white men to feel like they have, like, entitlement over someone else's body, but it's just, like, it's not okay, and it needs to stop, and you're not welcome at a swimmer's show if you do that. I hate insulting me. I mean, it's one of those things where I can say, like, I can, I can talk for hours about it, but it's not something, it's something that sadly, like, I benefit from. And so, like, like it, to, to all the dudes out there who, who, like, think they're not misogynists, think really critically about everything you do, because it, it goes deeper than just being a misogynist. Everyone has a degree of misogyny in them. Like, it's not something that you can control, it's not an identity, it's just, it's, uh, it's a phenomena that seeps into our everyday life the same way that other things do. Uh, so just make sure to keep yourself in check, and if someone calls you on being a misogynist, like, don't say, I'm not, I can't be a misogynist, say, oh, well maybe that action was misogynist, maybe I need to think about what I'm doing, and hopefully, like, Hopefully, you are self-aware enough to be able to, to analyze yourself and, and try to stop misogynist actions when they're about to come out of you. <laughs> that, that, that's what we're going to say. I'm Cole Becker, and I'm in Swimmers, and I support Girls Against.